Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Remote Play of Earth Defense Force 4.1 which should be out by the time you see this, it's not at the moment but we will go and take a look at it anyway because they gave me the opportunity to so I figured, figured why the hell not so we're just going to load directly into one player mission mode because there's nobody playing this online at the moment and it's worth noting that there are a few things we're going to need to talk about but we will go and have a look at the game settings, so actually no, we can do this in game, so let's just get into a mission as fast as possible as the air raider, because that will be very useful to us for reasons that will become apparent in a moment. So let's do retaliation. Select a difficulty. Deploying. Alright, so the way this game works is that You've got three different classes which have roughly the same control set, which is the Raider, the Ranger, the Air Raider, and the Wing Diver. Although they, I believe they call them the, yeah, the Wing Diver. I wish they called them the Pale Wing, but oh well. So, so my general, if we go to the game settings now, we can actually come and have a look at some of the settings. So, some of the things are obvious, like we can turn off the screen shake, the rotation speed, obviously, which is kind of nice for the, you know, Vita's analog stick to configure that. And you can also turn off the ability to skip cutscenes and display the online ideas. You can even make the heads-up display smaller if you feel like it, but I'm fine with having it like just the, the default size. Now the most interesting thing about this is that we can actually assign controls directly to the three classes which I just mentioned, the Ranger, the Aerator, and the Wing Diver. So if I reset them to the default, you can see the default controls right here. Now I don't actually like these ones very much. You want to know why? Because it's got this control scheme. And this control scheme means that, by default, you attack using the touchscreen, which is not very good. So let's go through and remap all these to something a little bit more, or should I say a little bit less, ridiculous. So if we just go through and press any button that we feel like using, we can... I'm just trying to remember what I had of that now. Uh, vehicle plus Rex I had it on touchpad. Spock can stay on R3, because why not? So yeah, as you can see, you can remap pretty much all the controls to whatever you like, which is very, very, very convenient. So if we go back to the previous menu, we actually have something that we can work with now. And also, I keep I keep forgetting that the jump, for some reason, means is the dodge button. So we've got to just remap that to L1, because I'm an idiot. So if we remap that and go back to the game, we can now do this. Blow the shit out of every spider that we see, because that's fun times. So yeah, as we can see, the controls work pretty fine. You can do whatever you... You, you can work with them just fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call down a vehicle, because I actually have to show off the vehicles. I have a very good reason for this. We just go away for that becomes yeah, it won't be long. But yeah, on foot... The control scheme that I set up there works just fine, and again, you can swap to anything you want, even on multiple buttons on the top screen. Now, this is where things get a little more interesting. Here's the E551 Gigantus, which is the tank. Now, the vehicle controls in this game can't actually be rebound, and unfortunately, it also works on R2, so you actually have to tap the screen to fire. And if I go back to the live area just while I'm being shot at from multiple directions and we actually load up the game's digital manual and scroll down a fair bit because the vehicle controls that we want are actually pretty far down in the manual when it decides it wants to load please and thank you here they are so as you can see or you might not be able to see because it's, the text is actually pretty small as you can see all the controls here are just almost completely different for every vehicle. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty simple and it's not that big of a deal to have the fire button on R2 because, I mean, if anything, it makes you stand still, relax, and actually focus on aiming your shots properly because of the way these work. But unfortunately, it is also kind of hard to, you know, work with a helicopter there because you have to hold the L2 button, which is this, to ascend, which is just infuriating, and also have this to attack and... Did not mean to do that. Let's go back to that and... Especially when you come to things like the Walking Feltress Valam, which, you know, have, have all four, the shoulder buttons and these two here, as attack buttons. So, not very pleasant, I must say. But thankfully, vehicles in Earth Defense Force don't really seem to be something that you use very often, at least not in all the other titles. 
it still might not be that big of a deal in this game anyway, but it's worth mentioning that you may want to have a controller handy if you're going to go wandering around in the vehicle, although if you're playing as the wing diver or fencer as your classes, you won't have to worry about hopping in vehicles in anything more than just supportive roles. So, it may not be that big of a deal to you, although with the air raider, considering that the majority of his use is vehicles, it may be worth, you know, not playing as him unless you're planning on using a DualShock 4. But anyway, let's not make this video go on for too long. We're going to retreat and we're going to pick the fencer and go into the same mission again just to demonstrate how he works. So we'll just select retaliation again because why not, right? Alright, so here we are as the Fencer. And I'm pretty sure I said Air Raider last time because I'm an idiot. But anyway, this is the Fencer. And the Fencer, his control scheme is completely different from the others, as shown by the fact that we can change his controls completely separately. This is what I've got it set up with at the moment. Now, if I hit Restore Default, as we can see, this here is completely fucking useless because, again, it'll just have the alternate abilities of every particular weapon on the shoulder buttons and... I mean, the other buttons here aren't too bad of a set of buttons, but I have a different way of doing things. So if we change the attack buttons to these, and the use to X and no, X and square, and then we change jump to R2, because it's fine there. It doesn't You don't need to jump very often with the fencer. And switch weapon triangle, reload with square, uh, vehicle and rescue with the touchpad, because why not? Actually, no, that's got to be... That's square, and then... I've completely- I've gone completely forgot what I was doing, um... Oh yeah, I remember, I had- I had a circle and X. Alright. Uh, whatever, whatever, it works. So, that's generally what I use. So, if we just go into the actual fight with that... So, when you've got, like... You've got your weapons on your shell buttons, obviously, and if you've got, like, boosters or something you need to use, you have to take your finger off the right analog stick to use them. At least in my control scheme. But, nevertheless, it actually works pretty well, I've found. So, as you can see, I can take advantage of the fencer being an absolute walking tank if he just keeps swinging his weapon. You can also use these, I found, to do to do your weapon usages with, which works just fine, you know, obviously it's not as reliable as using your usual set of, you know, physical buttons to do his main attacks, but, you know, just, you know, play with the controls, see how they work, considering that you can play with them yourself, you don't have to rely on just my set, you can play with the controls and see how well they work for you. And considering the game runs at a natural 60, the remote play actually feels great when you've got the controls set up properly. Again, a bit of a bugger that the vehicles don't work in the way that one would hope they do, but oh well. Maybe a patch could fix that? Could swap R1, R2, L2, and L1. But, you know, right now it doesn't do that. Because swapping L1, L2, R1, and R2 around would make a lot of vehicles, not all of them, but a lot of them would be a hell of a lot better. But, you know, can't ask for everything. This is a defense force we're talking about. The majority of the combat you do is on the ground. But anyway, I'm going to end the video here before I spend too long playing this, because I tend to spend too long playing EDF once I get into it. So, that was a quick look at Earth Defense Force 4.1's remote play. Fencer works fine, every other class works fine, vehicles not so much. It is fine to play on remote play if you don't plan on going for the vehicles though, which is like three out of the four classes, or at least two out of four classes. So this has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.